very much. I'm pleased to introduce Dr. Lisa Bailey. I mentioned to you before, she's a surgeon who has taken time from her busy schedule to come to talk to us today because she's deeply concerned about this issue. She's also a leader in oncology throughout California and a national leader as well in oncology practice. And she's going to talk with us about the unusual cases of breast cancer that she and her colleagues are seeing. Thank you, Lisa. Well, thank you. Um, so we have some anecdotal cases. We call them anecdotal because we don't have any research studies yet. Um, we desperately need that. Uh, but we have, we have seen some very unusual breast cancers in women who have carried their cell phones uh, very close to their breasts um, some in their bras. So um, we've had two cases of women in, uh, at the age of 21, which is a highly unusual age for women to develop breast cancer. Uh, these are in a published case series now. These, were, these women were healthy. They had no known risks for breast cancer. They all tested negative for inherited risk factors. They had no family history of breast cancer. Um, and you see the um, citation at the bottom. So, you know, we know that fat and fluid will um, respond to heat in a microwave oven, and breast tissue is mostly fat, and um, our bodies are mostly fluid, water, as you, I'm sure you've heard before. Um, so it's not, um, it, it doesn't take much of a stretch of imagination to imagine that a microwave uh, signal close to the body and the heat, or the heat from that uh, device might have some effect on the tissues nearby. Uh, this is an MRI, and I'll show it to you again, um, but this is on one of the 21-year-old patients. So an MRI is a, is a three-dimensional construction of, a, of a, um, whatever it's looking at, in this case, the breast. You can see both breasts. The woman is lying face down, uh, and there are two um, cup-like devices for the breast to go into. You know, her arms are out ahead of her, so the, the breasts are... are um, She's prone on, on her abdomen, and the breasts are hanging down. Um, and you can see, well, what, one of the things that's done with an MRI is you have an injection of something called gadolinium that goes through the bloodstream, and it highlights areas that have a higher blood supply, and um, breast cancers have a higher blood supply than normal tissue. So you can see in the, um, uh, I guess I have no way of pointing, uh, but you can see the green and red and yellow, or green and blue and, and red and, and yellow color over in the uh, lateral or outer part of uh, her breast. And that's the entire area of breast cancer in a 21-year-old woman. That's, um, it's quite extensive uh, and involves you know, a good portion of her breast. We, have, uh, we had a video, uh, KT View came and did a um, special and won an, was it an Emmy? What, the, yes. Whatever it is that they win for they won team, for that Best segment. Um, so we have additionally five women who are premenopausal. And you can see, you know, women will store their cell phones in their bra. Um, it may, it's, we found that uh, in these women that the area of the cancer that was diagnosed was in the same area where they stored their cell phone. Now, is that proof that, they, that the cell phone caused the breast cancer? No, it's not. But it certainly makes us highly suspicious that it was a cause or a contributing cause to the breast cancers, particularly in these young women with no other risk factors. And you have to ask yourself, well, two things. One is, you know, what can we do to avoid having, you know, what can we do for cell phone safety? What can we do to let people know about the potential health risks? So that's what's happening today. Um, and it's a call to, we need some research. We need people to, do, to um, collect data. We need to have women asked where they're keeping their cell phones. Um, we need some research on this topic. Um, this is a, the first case report in 2009. So what you're seeing, uh, you're seeing the breast from the side. That white strip um, on the left is the pectoralis major muscle, your chest, major chest wall muscle. And um, you're seeing 
uh, areas that are denser, the whiter parts are denser, and then you're seeing lots of little dots, and those little dots are calcifications. And that's the area of the breast cancer uh, that this woman was diagnosed with. She used her um, cell phone four hours a day, uh, or kept her cell phone in her bra four hours a day for 10 years. Um, she was an avid runner. She was very healthy, um, thin, uh, Chinese-American woman. And you can see where her cell phone might have been placed against uh, her breast in that area. Um, these, um, these case reports, uh, as I mentioned, you know, they're women um, who have um, no family history of breast cancer. They were tested for the BRCA mutations, which are the most common type of inherited breast cancer mutations, and they were all negative. They had... Um, sometimes an unusual or less common location for their breast cancer and mixture of types of uh, cancers within it. Um, and the, the breast tissue completely away from the cancer was, was normal. There were no atypical areas. Um, two of them had um, metastasis or spread of the cancer to other areas. And you're just seeing a very extensive um, uh, grouping of calcifications and masses in, the, in this patient. And again, that's her MRI. So if you can go, you can imagine that entire outer part of her right breast as involved with cancer. Um, the, it's a widespread bad habit. The, you know, it's a high dielectric constant. Um, and um, con consisting chiefly of the um, adipose or fat tissue and fluid in the breast against uh, the cell phone. Um, another location where sometimes women will keep their their cell phones. There are bras that are made to keep cell phones in them. Seems like a pretty bad idea. Um, so, you know, remember, it's a two-way microwave radio. And it's working constantly. Unless it's in airplane mode, it's working constantly to try and find a signal, whether you're talking on it or not. So distance is your friend. I mean, I have a cell phone, I use it a lot, uh, but I don't keep it in my bra. <laughs> I don't keep it in my pocket. Uh, I have a patient, and then we, we talked about all these other patients, these eight patients were all premenopausal, or they were all young women, and I mentioned two of them were 21. I have another patient who's postmenopausal. She's 68, she's in a wheelchair. She's trying to maintain her independence. She's living by herself, and she can, in her apartment, she's got a way to get up and kind of move from wall to wall or chair to wall and so forth. She wants to stay in her own place, but she needs her phone, so she keeps it in a t-shirt pocket. And the t-shirt pocket was exactly over the place where her breast cancer was. And she asked me, you know, could the breast cancer have been caused because of my cell phone? I don't know, but it's not a good idea to keep your cell phone there. Um, so follow the manufacturer's advice. Keep the cell phone away from your body. Um, only use it um, uh, with uh, um, some kind of device. Uh, uh, did you show them what you've got? I love your thing. Um, and avoid using it when the, when the signal's weak because it's be trying even harder uh, to find a signal for you. Um, She's talking about this. <laughs> Is a way, and actually you can hear with it, so it works. Yeah, okay. yeah, it's very cute. It's a different color than the last time. Yeah. Um, so um, the fine print warning uh, does uh, state to keep the um, uh, cell phone away from your body. And this says, this is for an iPhone 4, for optimal mobile device performance and to be sure that human exposure to RF energy does not exceed the FCC, IC, and European Union guidelines. Always follow these instructions and precautions. And it goes down to say, increase, uh, what, when on a call using the built-in audio receiver, hold the iPhone with the dock connector pointed down toward your shoulder to increase separation from the antenna. When using the iPhone near your body for voice calls or for wireless data transmission over a cellular network, keep the iPhone at least 15 millimeters. So there's about 25 millimeters to an inch um, in, in medical stuff. We, we're definitely metric. Um, 
away from your body. Only use carrying cases, belt clips, or holders that don't have metal parts. And again, maintain that 15 millimeter separation from your body, um, including when it's in your pocket. The BlackBerry, um, they, they, uh, BlackBerry has a um, statement about keeping them away from pacemakers um, because you don't want your pacemaker to <laughs> signal to be affected by um, uh, by your cell phone or your BlackBerry. And um, again, don't carry. They tell you not to carry it in your pocket. If you want any more information, we've got the website. Um, you can contact me. Um, I've put my my email address there. Um, I'm sure Deborah would be happy to answer anybody's questions that you come up with afterwards. Um, and thank you for your attention. Dr. Lashinsky, and at this point we'll take a, we'll, we will take a few questions because Dr. Bailey is not going to be able to be with us uh, for the entire time. So Lisa, if you want to read the questions and answer them as you like. Sure. Um, is this on? Yeah. Okay. Um, so the first question is, um, I'm past president of the American Cancer Society for the California Division. And um, so the question is, did I ever bring these facts to the um, American Cancer Society and what did they say or do? So the California Division has a committee called um, Cancer in the Environment. And I've been a member of that committee since its inception um, many years ago. We've, been working, we've worked on a number of different um, areas around the environment and cancer, and I, I have brought this uh, information to them, and uh, we are looking at it. Um, and um, so th this will be an ongoing process with them. But yes, I have done that, and, and we do have a lot of concerns in California about the issues of cancer in the environment. Um, the um, other question is, what percentage of young women have multiple primary breast cancers? Um, the, the, um, using the MRI, we found um, more um, cancers, um, more than one cancer in more women than we used to um, find without MRI. Um, and there's a lot of debate about what all of that means. Um, could, could some of them be treated with the radiation, you know, have a lumpectomy of the one that's found, and would that have treated it or not, and so forth. There's, there's a lot of controversy, and if when I go to medical meetings, there's sometimes you'll have a point counterpoint debate at the at the podium about um, about MRIs and so forth. But the you know the multiple primary breast cancers is not common in any age. Um, probably no more than about 10% um, of the breast cancers are multiple uh, primaries at the same time, um, and it doesn't um, there doesn't seem to be a huge variation by age at least, at least as far as we know. Thank you.